for joining us each and every morning. Thank you for always showing up because you know what? 80% is showing up. And Rhea and I always want to give you the best value as much as possible to improve your life. So thank you for always coming. And today, my amazing co-host, Rhea, is going to be taking over the conversation. So, you know, this is just going to be amazing. So do make sure that, you know, we have, you know, really ample time so that you can really absorb the conversation the information Rhea is sharing. So welcome to the new people. Welcome to the show. So before I bring Rhea around, my name is Alka. My name is Rhea. And, and welcome, welcome to, to our, our show. show. All right, Rhea, I'm going to pass the mic to you. Thank you, Alka. Today's topic is the continuation of increasing our financial IQ by Robert Kiyosaki. And this is financial intelligence number four, which is leveraging our money. Last week, we talked about investors only for capital gains. And today, we're going to talk about investors only for cash flow. So continue to, to continue, I will be sharing eight lessons I learned from today's topic, which is investors only for cash flow. So the first lesson is that many investors like, they like savings, they like bonds. And why is that? Because of the steady income it provides, steady income. Second, some investors like municipal bonds or munis, as they call it, because they pay tax free return now you may ask what is a muni or also known as municipal bond what is a muni or municipal bond so Mooney or municipal bond, these are debt securities, which is issued, issued by either our state, by our cities, by our counties, or other government entities. Now, this municipal bonds or munis is used to fund the day-to-day -day operations. the day-to-day -day operations, the day-to-day -day obligations, the capital projects, such as building schools, highways, these are the roads, or our sewer system, improvement of our sewer system. So these cities, counties, state, other government entities, they lend, they lend money to the bond. They're lending money to the bond 
issuer in exchange for promise of regular interest payment. So they pay us regular interest payment plus, right, plus the return of the capital, our capital. Now, in the book, Robert gave an example that, for example, the investor buys a tax-free municipal bond which pays 7% interest, example. And this is the effective ROI or return of investment, which is the same as, for example, a 9% taxable return and why do you why do i say or why does the book say a seven percent interest of the municipal bond is similar to a nine percent taxable return when nine percent is higher don't forget that the this is the municipal bond And this is a taxable investment. Could be stocks, right? So what the book says, the 7% municipal is the same as the 9%. Why? Because the 7% is tax-free, whereas the 9% is taxable. So in the end, they would have the same ROI. Now, lesson number three. In real estate, many investors love triple net that's called triple net so, so triple net leases lesson number four with triple net leases investors receive income with out expenses without expenses and these are so without the expense of paying taxes without the expense of paying repairs without the expense of paying insurance this is what triple net is so you don't pay tax as a landlord, you don't pay repairs as a landlord, you don't pay insurance as a landlord. Your tenant pays all of this. So the tenant covers all costs. And all costs, again, are your taxes, which is very high, your repairs, in your insurance that's why it's called triple net lease fifth lesson in many ways 
a triple net lease is like a municipal bond because a lot of income can be tax free or tax deferred. Now let's talk more on municipal bonds. So I have a table prepared on this. So municipal bonds are, you try to blow bonds this bonds are um, debt securities again, issued by the city, by the town, by the county or other government um, entities. Now, after a long and difficult 2022 year to date, municipal bond market should fare better in 2023. So the question initially was, is it a good investment now? So in 2022, it was not, but they think that in 2023, municipal bond markets should do bet better. They think that rates will be volatile. Volatile, it can go up, it can go down due to Fed policy and concerns about economic growth. However, for the first time in a long time, investors can finally earn attractive yields without having to take an undue risk. Yield is how much income, income an investment make. Okay, make or that is the interest. payment we receive. So yield is like interest. So when they say yield, it's interest. It's the income. Now, what is the downside? What is the cons of the municipal bonds? So the, the article says the default risk of the municipal bonds is low. However, Muni bonds, like I said, municipal bonds is also called Munis. They are subject to interest rate risk or the risk that rising rates will lead to falling prices. So there's an increase on the rates, the interest rates, interest rates, then the bonds will fall. So there's, there's an inverse correlation. This is even more true for investors in bond funds and exchange traded funds that invest in money. So like I said, I'm not a stock person. There's more specifics to bond funds and exchange traded funds. That's another topic to be discussed. So to go to proceed, these are the pros and these are the cons of municipal bonds. So the pros are, like I said earlier, it's tax free. It's tax exempt from federal tax and possibly state and local tax. Low volatility, it does not go up or go down as much. Minimum default risk, because it's issued by the city, by the town, by the county. Now the consequences, the bond price could fall, right? There's an inverse correlation between the bond and the interest rate. So the bond fund could fall, especially with high interest rate. And... It is not inflation friendly. So in today's market, bonds are not inflation friendly. Why? Because the interest rate, the yield, the interest that they pay us is low. And the consequences is there is still a chance of default. Now, let's look at the yield. So this was the yield. So this is the municipal bonds. This is the year. 
and this is the Bloomberg aggregate. Now in 2017, so it was from, you know, to negative to as high as, I guess, 12.9% over the year. So there are negative years here. So there are several negative years. Let me just, this is negative 2013 and 2021 is also negative. So the bond, this is one of the consequences, the bond price, the bond price could fall. So if you look at this table, this was according to October 24, 2022 article. 2017 was 5%, whereas the average the Bloomberg was 3.5%. Now let's look at the before COVID. The bond was 6.8 and Bloomberg was 8.7 during COVID. So it was earning 6.4, whereas the Bloomberg is 7.5%. So that is why it says here it's not inflation friendly, right? Now, if we look at today where it's high inflationary, look, the interest in 2021 is negative 1.4, whereas the Bloomberg aggregate is 2.9, right? So 1.4, you're negative, you're losing money. So this is why it says here the consequences is it's not inflation friendly it is not so why are municipal bonds losing value and the answer is the rising interest rates the rising interest rates negative negatively impact the price of bonds including municipal bonds and this prompts many investors to sell which puts further pressure on bond prices. So if there's many people that are selling, then the uh, interest rates, the yield will even dip, will even go down. Now to continue. So hopefully that enlightened you about municipal bonds. So lesson number six. So while Robert likes the triple net properties, the trouble is Finding good deals. Okay, finding good deals and finding good tenants that are willing to pay a high return. Lesson number seven. So when Robert wrote the book around 2008, he said most triple net properties are only paying about five to six percent ROI return of investment. And Robert Robert does not find the five to six percent return of your money not exciting. It is not worth his time and effort. So lesson number eight. The good news, according to Robert, is that if he digs deeper, he is able to find 
properties with much much higher return plus a higher return plus using more leverage and using Robert's bank to lower his risk because remember the bank is 80% loan to value and you pay the 20 100%. 100%. That's what it means that he lowers his risk. And all this, Robert prefers the triple net real estate. versus the tax-free municipal municipal bonds. All right. So those are my eight lessons for today. It's a continuation from the book of Robert Kiyosaki, Increase Our Financial IQ. And this is the three, three types of investor, and specifically, we're going to talk about the investor only for cash flow. Last week, we talked about investors only for capital gains. Today, we're going to talk about investors only for cash flow. So there are eight lessons, and here they are. First lesson, many investors like savings, like bonds, because of the steady income. Second, some investors like municipal bonds are called munis. Why? Because they pay a tax-free return. Now, what is a muni or municipal bond? These are debt securities and issued by our state, by cities, by counties, and other government entities. What do they do? They need to fund the day-to-day -day operations, obligations, capital projects such as schools, highways, and sewer system. That's why they issue the securities. And in return, they give you an interest. So they lend money to bond issuers in exchange for promise, what, of regular interest payment plus the return of the capital. So for example, an investor buys a tax-free municipal bond, which pays 7% interest. This is just a hypothetical example. 7% interest effective ROI or return of investment. And the 7% on the tax-free municipal bond is the same as the 9% taxable return. So 7% is the same as 9%. Why? So 7% of the municipal bond is the same as the 9% taxable investment, such as stocks. Why? Because the 7%, you don't pay any taxes on it. When you pay a tax on a taxable investment, such, a ta such as stocks, your return goes down. So therefore, that's why the book says the 7% of the municipal bond is the same as the 9% of a taxable investment, such as a stock. So they have the same ROI. Third, in real estate, many investors, they love, love, love triple net, triple net leases. With triple net leases, investors receive income without, without expenses. So investors receive income without having to pay for taxes, income without having to pay for repairs, income without having to pay for insurance. The tenant covers all the costs all the costs of the taxes, all the costs of repairs, all the costs of insurance. So the money that they give you, the income that they give you is 100% yours. That's why it's called triple net. You are netting all of it. 
in many ways, a triple net lease is like a municipal bond because a lot of income can be tax-free or tax-deferred. So let's dig dive into municipal bonds. So let me get my table, which I prepared earlier. And let me blow this up. So are municipal a good investment now? That is the question. After a long and difficult 2022 year to date, the municipal bond market should fare better in 2023. We think that rates will be volatile due to Fed policy and concerns about economic growth. Volatile means the interest or the yield can go up and down. Now, however, for the first time in a long time, investors finally can earn an attractive yield without having to take an undue risk. So yield, I said, is how much income. It is income an investment make or the interest payment. Now, what is the downside of the municipal bonds? Well, the default risk is low. Municipal bonds are subject to interest rate risk or the risk that rising rates will lead to falling prices. So they have a uh, inverse relation, increase interest. There's decrease in the bond. Okay, so they have an inverse relationship. Now the pros and costs consequences of the municipal bonds the pros which is the positive it's tax free it's tax exempt from federal state and local possibly state and local low volatility so it doesn't go up or down minimal default risk why because it is issued by the city by the town by the county by the state right this are our government the consequences the bond price could fall so it could fall during high interest, which is like right now. It is not inflation friendly because when you have high inflation, high inflation, the interest is high and you're only earning sometimes negative in several years. And there is still a chance of default. Now I have a table here. So these are the years where uh, the municipal bonds were negative, 2008 minus 2.5, 2013 minus 2.6, 2021 was minus 1.4. So here, right, the bond price could fall, the consequence. Now, if we looked at the municipal bonds versus the Bloomberg, in 2017, it was earning 5.4. I think the highest it earned was in 2009 for 12.9%. 2009. Now, if we looked at before COVID, it was 6.8 versus 8.7. During COVID, 6.4 versus 7.5 on Bloomberg. So as we can see, 2020, if we put our money in the savings account, our savings would earn a 0.01%. So it is a lot better. Municipal bonds is a lot better, right? 6.4 in 2020. Now here in 2021, this is minus 1.4%. That's negative compared to the Bloomberg of 2.9. So here in 2021, we are losing money. So why are my municipal bonds losing value? Because of the rising interest rate, which negatively impacts the price of bonds. And this prompts many investors to sell, which puts further pressure on the bond prices. So that is the reason why. Now to continue on lesson number six. So while Robert likes triple net leases, the trouble is finding good deals. Good luck in finding them because it is hard to find. And finding good tenants willing to pay a high return. 
when Robert wrote the book around 2008, most triple net leases are only paying about 5 to 6% return of investment. And according to Robert, he does not like it. The 5 to 6% 5 to return of investment does not excite him. Lesson number eight. The good news, according to Robert, is if he digs deeper, he's able to find deals with much higher return and using more leverage and using Robert's bank to lower his risk. Why lower his risk? Because it is not 100% of his money. The bank gives you 80% of the money, whereas Robert puts in 20%, and that's how he lowers his risk. Now, Robert prefers the triple net real estate, oops, the triple net real estate versus the tax-free municipal bonds. So he prefers the real estate still. So those are my lessons learned. Let me know in the comment section below what you learned on today's topic. So stay tuned for more. Uh, you know what? You talked about the you talked about the bonds and like you know, 2022 was a difficult year that you know we all had. Uh, 2023 is going to fit. It's going to be a little bit better. So I guess with with the market that we are in now, you know, the downturn, interest rates going high, is actually not. If you're investing in bonds, you're going to lose money. So it's not the it's not the right time. Yes. So according, you know, there, it's always speculation, right? Just right. like True. with housing, yeah. they say it's going to crash, mm -hmm. and yeah. it's. And some gurus out there, they say that th this is not like 2008 where it's not going to crash. So just like what other gurus for bonds say that, you know, it is much better than 2021 where it's negative 1.4. Right. right. So there's always two sides to the coin. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of knowing. So I'm not a bond person. Right. So I don't know much about it. But that's what the gurus say, that it's much better. The prices, the, the yield, the interest would be a lot better compared to the negative 1.4% in 2021. Exactly. I mean, you know, that, that's the thing. You know, it's always like hearsay. It's always that speculation. Uh, you know, people that are listening would really need to do their own research apart from the stats that you shared they need to do their own research if they want to invest in bonds and you know mutual funds etc and stocks do your own research don't rely on what you read in the article don't rely on what the uh, gurus say do your own research talk to people who have done it who have you know who are doing success with it and so when you do that then you know then at least we safeguard ourselves that we've done the research we want to invest in the bonds and it's okay but rather than going in blindly and then you lose your money not a wise that investment is, that is correct it's always about increasing our financial intelligence exactly financial intelligence is the key guys is the key. So, Ria, thank you so much for sharing the amazing, valuable information. Guys, hope you took notes as to what Ria shared so that if you want to invest in bonds and the markets, especially right now, you know, we are in a downturn market. Interest rates are just fluctuating so high that if you do not do your research as to, you know, don't rely on what the gurus are saying, don't rely on you know the speculation that's happening by people, what they're saying, what they're not saying. Do your own research. In this way, when you do your own research, you at least then safeguard yourself to say, mm, wait a minute, I don't think I want to, right? Rather than going in blindly just because what Ria has said, just because uh, you know, Ria is not an expert expert in bonds. She's just sharing the information so you get knowledgeable as to what you need to do and what you need to avoid. So do your own research so that this will be the best way possible so you don't lose money. So increasing your financial IQ every time. So thank you, guys.